Thank you. Okay, we're live. It's okay. so easy to do this on StreamYard because it's like not the same. I'm like, okay, well, here we are. Hi, ladies. Um, I hope you guys can all comment if you want to comment or ask questions. I think that you can. Um, so we have Michelle today. Hi, Michelle. Hi. And really what Michelle and I's intention today is, is to like off the cuff, just have a super organic conversation. Um, a few months ago, I can't remember exactly when, I probably could have looked up the date before we had this conversation, but Michelle and I had a session together um, and we know each other from other groups and it was such a good, it, was, it wasn't it was a good, it was an amazing conversation that we had. It was like, it was a, a pivotal conversation. Yeah, it yeah. was. Um, I think a good place to be could start with like where you were in your love life leading up to that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So like leading up, such a mess, <laughs> but, but like, like really such a mess, but like leading up to our conversation, like in the shorter term, I think I was like, not stuck but like totally at a like I felt like I was at a standstill and like nothing was happening yeah. it was like I had I had gotten healthy enough and clear enough that I was pulled out of the stuff that really wasn't working and it was like I was open and ready for good things to come yeah but it was like I was frozen there like I don't know how to make this happen yeah yeah. And just for you guys watching, um, I asked Michelle's permission to like, that we could talk a bit about some of the things that happened um, in the session. And so what I remember was like the big, big question. It was like, is there something I need to do to like, like welcome, attract, like meet this love? And that was the topic. So I didn't answer that question for her. The topic was really, let's figure out, is there something you need to do to welcome this love and like finally have it? Um, what were the biggest, like I know the key things that stand out for me from that session. What were the standout like takeaways for you from that conversation? I think the big, so there's like that one big takeaway, but the, the part that, let me get to the big takeaway is something about our session something i think for so long like i i have been or sometimes i'm inclined to get stuck in my head with like a strategy that i think is smart yeah and that will kind of take precedence over some things that i might be feeling and something about something you said made me feel like it was okay to be like well, actually, this is what I want, you right. know, like it was just like I was able to just be like, well, you know, what I actually want is to have it now and to have it like screw, um, like screw being patient or screw whatever. And yes, there's something about the vibe that you created. Let me do that. And from that place, it was like the most empowering realization of like, I get to claim what I want. And that was the word, it was claim. Claim, yeah, so it's just like, no wait, I get to choose, I get to claim, and if I'm gonna claim something, it gets to be anything I want. It doesn't have to be, this is a good idea, or like, this is how it works. It's like, no, I get to yeah. have what I want, yeah. I remember that so clearly, and like it being really specific to, okay, in these moments in your day where everything feels done and now there's this kind of empty space and you're at home or wherever you are mm -hmm. kind of feeling this empty space of like this would be the nice time to have that person here mm -hmm. it was like that conversation like do i just be patient with that but i've been patient with it and do i just sit with it and feel the hope and it, I, if i remember correctly it was like well in that space that's where you say all right i'm ready to put someone in here with me like, mm -hmm. I'm ready, let's do it, I'm ready, I'm claiming this. And it was this, for you, I, if, it was like the energy of stepping into, like, what's next for you is to actually start claiming this vision. Can you tell us a little, or like tell whoever's watching, um, 
a little about the vision, the way you had sort of described it to me in the garden. Yes. <laughs> and like, remember, this is like metaphorical in a way, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. So I had, yeah, totally metaphorical. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, ha I had this vision of myself kind of like walking around in this like garden, like maybe even like picking herbs or like flowers and like maybe even having a basket and just, you know, my hair is long and flowing and I'm in like this summer dress and I'm sort of surrounded by like trees and nature and my little cabin. And all of a sudden I see in the distance, I see a man and there's like this long kind of time. It's like he's far enough away that it's going to be like a while before he gets to me, but I see him clearly and I just know, oh, he's walking towards me. I'm the only one here to, to be here right now meant he was so intentional in coming here. Like he was so sure he had to travel and decide I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. And then I see him coming towards me and just knowing like, yep, this person is so intentionally directly coming for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember that, that you were saying something like you had the desire this time around to be pursued. Yeah. You kind of felt in one way or another, you were somewhat of the pursuer in the past. Mm -hmm. Thinking on that energy anyway, like even if, you know, like it was like you had done the pursuing. And so that was so... That was so clear. Um, and like, I remember the feeling of when you'd like really stepped into, oh, I, I get to claim this. Like yes. that is my next step. Like no longer like patiently waiting, but more like, okay, universe, like mm -hmm. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You actually, and the thing is you actually truly were ready and ready doesn't mean like you don't, still have fears or insecurities or like things won't come up when you meet the person yeah yeah <laughs> like i'm ready for this i'm ready for the next version of me that's going to come out in this relationship i'm ready to welcome him i'm ready to receive him like the thing that i think a lot of us get a little wrong i'll say is like okay we know we can ask part of the vision is asking but we're not actually open and ready and willing to receive mm -hmm. it's a key piece so what happened after so we had the session it was this beauty you, you were like so clear and mm -hmm. I could just, it was like so real how much you were embodying this yeah. and then there was like an inspired idea yes so I I don't know how long after that session like <clears throat> a week yeah I, I can't, somewhere around beak, just, I pulled in my driveway one day and before I got out of the car, I just had this thought like, I'm going to go on online dating again. And it was very strange for me because I had done it like, you know, a year before and then two years before that, just, and it was awful. Yeah. Like it felt awful. And I thought like, I will never do that again. That's not for me. I'm gonna meet someone in the real world. So having that thought, and they really felt like excited by that thought, like there's possibility there. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up that window. And I kind of like went back and forth in my mind for a minute, like, really? Like I swore I'd never do this. I'm almost embarrassed to to do it or like to tell someone because I so clearly said I'll never do that again. So it was like weird. But I just I realized, you know. I'm still in control of it. Like I, it's just one more, if I'm open, it's one more door to open. It doesn't mean I have to let in anything that doesn't match what I want. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm in control of that. So like, let's just also open that up and be really open to see what comes in. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was there. It was it like one of the first interactions you had that you met Ryan. Okay, so I see people commenting, but it doesn't show me who it is. I think. I'm oh, I, um, hello, love to you too, and heart back, and I will see who you are right afterwards. But please keep commenting and ask questions if you want. Okay, so was it one of the first? Was Ryan? Oh, can I say his name? One of the yes, first yes. people you came across when you went online, or like, how did that go down? Um, how long did it take? I think it was probably within a week of being on or two like within a week or two of being on he he was the first and only person that I actually met 
from the like I didn't go on any other dates. I had another date lined up, but before the date, I had a phone conversation with the person and something just told me like no, you can't go on this date. So I just was like, oh, okay. And and that was actually also kind of like a really pivotal piece for me too. Is like, I don't think I've ever canceled plans with someone or like said no to someone so directly. Like in the past, I probably would have been like, oh, like I'll still go. But I just thought like, well, what's the point? Something is telling me no. Yeah. I'm just going to trust myself and risk being like hurting someone's feelings or like that sounds so silly but that was hard for me to just say I'm really sorry I know we had these plans and just honestly say I'm just not feeling like this is right for me yeah. so that was a super empowering piece yeah I think it's I I wonder if even I did that before like I may have like matched Ryan already but I think I had to say no to that first before the dialogue really started with Ryan and then. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're saying something so key, which is like that you got on the phone call. And like I always suggest this. Had you gotten on the call with Ryan before meeting him? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I. But with him, though, it was like when I saw his picture, I got like this uh, like jolt of something in my stomach. Mm. and I just I was like I just knew I just knew I wanted to meet him yeah like I just I just knew yeah I just knew yeah and then how did that kind of um what's the word I'm looking for like follow the vision of like you in the garden and this man is coming towards you like mm. did, did it relate did it feel like it related to that vision it did. It was so it was challenging for me because my go to is like messaging and um, like efforting, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm going to create this. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to put energy into this, you know? So for me to be that person who's just doing her thing in the garden, being beautiful, you know, and like attracting this man. Yeah. I had to, it wasn't like I had to be patient, but I had to like kind of like handle the, f like the fear associated with doing something different, like, like letting the convert, letting him guide the conversation yeah. to where he was, he was directly asking me out directly kind of like leading the plans. Yeah. You know, like it was, it was kind of a little bit nerve wracking for me to sit back while I let him do that. Yeah because that's what I wanted because I always my other way of being made me wonder like I couldn't tell if people were just kind of like sure I'll go along with whatever she's proposing or if like that's what they wanted also and yeah. it was so important to me to feel like no this person very intentionally wants yeah you know to explore this with me and then so I, he really did that and then also he um, lives in Kingston right now. So he also had to, you know, that he also drove to Kingston to come on a date with me, you yeah. know, like, yeah. so, yeah. So it felt like this person yeah. chose to kind of pursue me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> well, and that's been, that's been a few months now. Yeah. Like yeah. just over three months, I guess. I'm curious, what do you think? So I think there's definitely something within you that makes you like a like someone who just manifests very quickly. Um, and like without diving into this very deep because I'm not a human design expert, Michelle's human design is actually called a manifester. Doesn't mean other people can't manifest, but that is very much like a natural um, piece of her. Human design like combines like astrology um, the chakra system and a few others. Again, not a not the expert, but what is it? So that aside, because we still all have the ability to manifest. What do you think is like? If you can even answer that question, is the reason that 
things transpired so quickly. So like we had the session and then I can't remember, there was something about the challenge. Either you met him during the challenge that I ran in Date with Dignity or it was before or after, I can't remember, but there was something around the challenge. Why do you think the results came so fast? Can you answer that? Mm -hmm. um, so we have a couple ideas. One is, is for whatever reason, that's just what I really wanted. Yeah. Like I, I just, in, in a completely, not irrational way, but it was just like, if I could choose to just like have this like wonderful thing really fast or yeah. wait longer, I just want it, <laughs> you know? So partially it was just like a, it shows. yeah, it was just like a not selfish desire, but like, hmm, if I could choose, that's what I choose. It almost like I've been waiting. I felt like I've been waiting 35 years for this thing that I want. And it's just yeah. like, let's not waste time. So I think one is just that I wanted it to be that way. Yeah. And I think a combination of, like, not, like trusting, trusting myself and trusting the process just like kind of helped me lean in to believe that it was possible you know like so I think and I think maybe my first date with him might have been the Sunday before the challenge started on a Monday what? or something that sounds very true yeah yes so it was like this perfect timing to I had this thing and also so like I do tend to manifest things quickly but also I have a long history of manifesting these very big dramatic things that aren't so good yeah do you know what I mean like it's just like these things can be your weakness too exactly so these wow. things show up in my life like wow and then it's like that's a disaster like or like a bomb kind of goes off and so it was such good timing to have that that week, that every day of, of kind of like connecting to what am I creating? Because if I'm not intentional with what I'm creating, it helped me not go off the rails in that really sensitive yeah, that's time. Yeah, really cool. The timing just like literally lined up perfectly. Didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah. So, and it was, so I think that piece is just like having that like touchstone of like you and the, and the group and the challenge and just and just being like okay like i'm gonna trust if i lean in this way that it will help this yeah. instead of like when you're a bit more disconnected just like walking around the world listening to popular opinion or like conventional wisdoms there's like a lot of i don't know there's so much like cynicism or bad advice out there that makes you not trust the like hopeful innocent romantic love things and i think that that being having that bubble of being like okay now i'm gonna like trust dreams and love and magical things i'm gonna let myself yeah. i think that made it come fast and i think it's really worth pointing out that you actually do the work like in work like mm -hmm. you do the reflection you sit and you ask the big questions you listen for the answers so if anyone is watching this and is like, well, like, what, you know, how? <laughs> like, she, Michelle is very much willing to go there, whether it's with a coach or just on her own, to, like, really, like, allow herself to dream and ask questions and get a bit uncomfortable with maybe the answers that come up. And that's such a part of the process. It's like, yeah, the part of the work might for one person might be, like, being more social and getting out and doing those things. And, but usually a big part of it, it's like the mindset and the practical, right? So Michelle chose the mindset of I'm claiming this. And then the practical step still based on an inner knowing was get back online, mm -hmm. right? So they really like, they come, they came hand in hand. There's another key thing that you really said that I think is worth pointing out. You said something along the lines, well, you said the words trusting the process. And it's funny because I was listening to you, I'm at the, like, I think the last book of Conversations with God, it's a trilogy, and I know you're very familiar. And 
God in the voice of a woman says something along the lines of um, the master or like mastery is when even when the evidence is not there, you still know and you still trust the process. And let's be honest, like that's the hardest thing about anything any of us are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Even when the results we don't see them but they are there like ryan's been born however many years ago like he was already there uh but we don't see it right in front of us so clearly yet like just still trust the process like that is mastery and that is creation and it's this blend of i intentionally create with my image like imagination in my mind and i claim what i want and then i sit back I claim mm -hmm. what I want and then I sit back. I claim what I want and then I surrender and I pray and I and I hand it over because it's a dance. It's a dance with the universe, right? So that they set things up so that Ryan is online at the same time that you are. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it's it is it's like if we could just allow ourselves to dance, and this is to myself too, right? Like you put in the intention and then you let the universe leave for a moment and then you come in, and then you let them leave. Um I love this story. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to share it because it's such a powerful um, example of how fast things can turn around. You were in an entirely different place around the subject of love when you and I first met. Mm -hmm. What do you think was, like, what, what kind of was the inspiration or the motivation that you were like, I'll also do join Bate with Dignity, like the actual mastermind, like, since you had already manifested him, and I think this is an important point because sometimes we we step into what we want and then we're not entirely sure what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of around you had connected with Ryan and I was launching the mastermind and you decided to join. Why? A couple reasons. One is that I think... I decided or I allowed it was already it was already true that having this relationship was really important to me yeah. but I allowed myself to make it a priority mm. because I think for a while I felt like yeah I deserve to have a good relationship obviously but these things are more important in my life first like say if I were to talk to my parents or like other people, they'd be like, oh, we'll make sure, you know, it's like your career and this and that are like, those are important. And then, you know, yeah, the, the relationship comes after all these things. And the truth for me, I realized was really like, oh, this is actually just as important for me. Mm -hmm. And just really allowing it and, and allowing like, I will put more energy into this relationship or like time, like money, energy. And I felt like having that like support in the container was just such a really lovely, luxurious, supportive thing I could give myself and this relationship. Like it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Even the, it's like, cause I want to take, I want it to be good. I want to take care of it. Like it was like a child, like, okay, I have it. Now let's not screw this child up, you know, let's not kill this child. Like let's keep this child alive and let's keep this child healthy and have all this support for me because there's going to be, I like, I sensed, it's funny. I sensed there was going to be continuing challenges, but I don't even think I knew, like I, part of me thought it would be even more smooth sailing, but yeah. it's like, there's still so many challenges. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's beautiful and wonderful, but it's, the support and the space is so, so nice. Yeah. I love that you were used the word luxurious because it's so like just yummy. And I think that we don't always allow ourselves to make those kind of like choices. I want to say like indulgent choices because some, some people might view it that way. Um, and I think that something that's such a key in you that I always notice is like, that is such a feminine quality mm. feminine energy quality to like indulge a little and and enjoy and embrace and allow the support and maybe that we've kind of gotten and i think i'm getting off track but like we've kind of gotten the idea of like female is like the woman who can do everything it needs to do it on her own but like allowing that support is actually when you think back to like times of matriarchy like 
like, you know, the red tent and like the support. And, and it kind of was like our own little red tent mm-hmm. right? and just allowing ourselves to commune together and, and be there for each other. It is, it's a luxury mm-hmm. that you can choose for yourself from time to time. And when something really matters and you want to nurture it in a specific way. I love yeah. it. And it also just like the idea of support, like that's, that was one of the big takeaways in another one of our sessions, right? And that's like, I'm realizing is so important to me because it's true. Like there, I have felt so much pressure to like be okay on my own, you know, or handle things on my own. And the idea that you can ask, like receive that I can ask and ask for and receive support is such a relieving like it's such a relief it's like it makes my heart melt it's like oh i deserve support that's okay to want support it's okay to receive it in whatever way whether it's like other women or you know praying for like please universe god like i need support all of those things embracing that really really helps me i think yeah i think Mm -hmm. it's such a key message for anybody watching because like we don't really um especially that support from kind of like through prayer and surrender that i know we we explore together that is a game changing it's game changing because it's like you literally have the best um team you could ever ask for like Mm -hmm. universal energy you just have to allow yourself to believe and you have to believe sometimes for a while, like before the evidence really does start showing itself. So if you're watching this and you're like, okay, hey, Michelle manifested her love within like two weeks, but it, <laughs> like it was actually 35 years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Is there anything else that you want to say or share? Um, I think... So I, I told you briefly before we hopped on, but like yesterday I was like, oh, things were not feel like I was really scared with, with what was in front of me. Yeah. And, and then, you know, and then last night it kind of by trusting the process and just like showing up, like, oh, this is, this is all I know how to do. This is how I know how to show up. It all just resolved so beautifully again. And I think like, as I went to bed being like, thank God, I feel good about my relationship again before having this conversation and being like oh, actually guys I don't I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing I just it really struck me of how, as how like how scary it can still be yeah you know and and just like through that whole process like we're making it sound really really nice and it it has been it's been like magical heart explodingly nice but there's so much fear in it and it's like really interesting for me to be in a place in a relationship where I I'm realizing like the fear isn't the true part, you know, like it's, it's um, the fear is part of it that's coming up to be released. And like, I can tell I'm healing lots of things in me, but the fear is still there and it doesn't mean you're heading in the wrong direction and Mm -hmm. and that i think i don't know if i would have been able to know that or stay strong in the face of all of that fear without the support you know like that's the part that's hard to face and keep leaning into and pushing through sometimes so it's not like Every day I walk around, ever since I manifested this love, and it's just so, no, like it still gets really scary sometimes. But on the other side of that, it's like I got to, every time it's so worth it. Like last night I went to bed being like, holy shit, I have a partner who is on my team and who worked through, like, you know, I think he said something along the lines of, listen, like, we've tied our rafts together. We've got one raft here. Like you can trust me. We're in this, like trust me. And it's like, Oh, okay. I've never been here before. You know, we're really, really all of these things that are coming up in me matter so much to this person and stuff comes up. We have to work through, but like absolute good intention, Yeah. you know, and that is, there were so many moments along the way 
that really could have stopped me. Like the fear was so big that it could have stopped me. Yeah. And yeah, and so just that, like having having like support and the space and like the reflections to help me be brave enough to go into the fear without feeling like I'm gonna die and I need to run away. Oh my God, like you said so many, I'm so happy that you brought this because um, we didn't go here and we might have been making it sound <laughs> really easy and um, just always easy. Um, and it's not, and it, and it doesn't, like I was even saying to Michelle before, like even when you're married or whatever, like there's, there's stuff, there's old patterns you release and new patterns you create and some that you don't love and it doesn't end. Um, but it is how you show up. And I love that you said, like, very specifically, the fear didn't mean you had to leave. And, you know, sometimes there is a feeling, a deep knowing that it's you are not supposed to be in a certain place. Like, I can think back to a relationship very specifically. And the feeling was actually kind of calm. It was like, you're not supposed to be here. You know that. Um, and then my fear taking over and being like, well, what do you mean? This person is so hot. And, like... <laughs> <laughs> like I've been with him for so long and now I'm, we're here and we're doing it like I'm staying. Um, and like the willingness to work through and what I'm hearing is that you're saying Ryan is willing. And like that willingness piece is so key. And you also said another word of intention. And like that is such a, like that is, you want to, for all of you who are either, you know, seeing someone or wanting to meet someone, like, sometimes your fears will arise and it's hard to discern is this my fear or my intuition it's probably one of the hardest things to like really get clear on in our lives period um but look at their intentions you know what you know with the information you have and mm -hmm. you can do your best with what you know mm -hmm. but that looking at their intention is such a massive piece to the puzzle like yeah they can't have good intentions but be like talking to you like shit and then that's acceptable but when you are scared and you just don't know a really like a really key piece to helping you find sort of your guiding post is like looking at that person's intentions mm -hmm. i love that you brought that in and mm -hmm. I, I love that you're really pointing out that like it doesn't like you've wanted this love, they're here, and it's not always smooth sailing. And even when it feels that way for a while, like it's so easy for us to then just, um, we have what we want and we quickly stop appreciating it. Mm -hmm. so really basking in like, I wanted this, it's here. Like I had that thought the other day about Jack and Jack and Cedric and like, I was like, I wanted this so badly like more than anything. And at times I forget that. And then I want other things really badly. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, remember how much this was like, if you could only have this and it's here. Yeah. So appreciating it. Yeah. Oh, it's so true. That's so good. I love you. I love you too. I so appreciate you. Like I asked Michelle, I'm like, are you down to like go wherever the conversation goes? She's like, anywhere it goes. <laughs> yeah. I I even um I, I, I told Ryan I was like, oh, I'm gonna be having like a conversation like about you kind of, you know, and all those like, just so you know, like I I talk about most things. He's like, oh okay, okay. Um, and he's like, so you know, just like don't. Uh, he's like, maybe just he's like, use my first name, maybe like my last name could be like an alias. I was like, deal, your last name is an alias. And was like, he's like, go, run, run with it. Because it's just, I I, I need, I love talking about it. I need to talk about it. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it feels so good to me to, yeah. to share and be honest about it. It takes know? a confident guy to accept that. Like, Jack knows, like, he is in every... <laughs> He's in everything, um, but I make him sound pretty down, down like damn awesome most of the time. Yeah. Like, in a while, I'm like, he sucked today, but I, I got over it because his intentions were good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, talking about it, I think I feel like especially like the way you make it sound is like every time you talk about it, it reminds you of 
I don't want to say the magic because it sounds so like not tangible because it was tangible. Like that was the whole thing that I want to say I felt from you. Like sometimes I, I work with women who are really, really, um, their growing edge could be being a bit more in their feminine energy. I don't mean like they're dressed beautifully, their nails are done. Like I don't even have my nails done usually. That's not what I mean. I mean like they're in their like doership. And there was a part of that in you saying like I was a pursuer. Um, what I felt that was for you, it wasn't so much even calling it masculine. I remember that didn't resonate with you, but like the, the energy of just like, like claiming what you want, which comes so easily for men usually. Mm -hmm. so I, yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. so many hearts and I don't know who because <laughs> StreamYard doesn't show. So I will just write you all back after, after this. Can you see that on your side, Michelle? I can't see anything at all. I only see you. I wish I could see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see after. Okay. Um, and ladies, if you have questions, like either specifically for Michelle or I or us both, just like tag us in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. And we can keep the conversation going. But I love this. I'm like, I could probably just go on and on and on. But I feel like we really got, I think we really got the message across. And mm -hmm. like for you, your next best step was that energy of claiming and whenever there was the space that it felt like, oh, I'm starting to get a bit lonely, where it was like, that was the exact time you were going to claim what you wanted instead of mm -hmm. moving into the loneliness space. Mm -hmm. And for someone else in that conversation, their next step might have been something entirely different. So I don't want you guys to watch this and assume that that is yours. It might be, and it might be when you hear this, being like, that is the next thing I need to do. Mm -hmm. So we might do that, but try to lean into what is your version of doing if it you were in the same boat you are in the same boat michelle was in which was just like really wanting that love to come lean into what that truly is for you because it's likely not the same for all of you mm -hmm. that kind of do you know one thing that has also kept me on track that is just occurring to me is honoring above everything else the way i want to feel and 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 at the beginning, I had all sorts of ideas about that. But as time kind of goes on, I uncover different desires of my own or like different preferences. Yeah. And then to and it's a little bit scary to continually kind of like make that a priority and like claim that as well and to say yeah. no to whatever else, because it's scary to think now that I'm so attached to this person and I love this person and I'm so like, okay, that's it. He's it. This is it. Then when there's something happening that I'm like, oh, wait, I don't love that. It's scary to say no, because it's scary that like, maybe I'll push him away or lose this thing. But it's the opposite. In fact, it's like, if I really have to keep trusting myself and my feelings that are arising, and even if I'm scared, I'm going to make him upset or push him away. If it's the truth, I have to stay it, say it, and I have to, I have to take a stand for it, and and I think that is, I think that's why I'm still happy with. I think that's why it's going where I want it to go, and I think that's why right now it feels so strong. It's because instead of kind of like compromising, or in, which I'm not saying compromising is bad, but instead right. of compromising or being like oh I'll try to be on more understanding and like the give and take being really confident and like well this is what I truly feel I want and is true for me and I'm gonna go out on the limb and take a stand for it yeah and do or do weird things or or not be afraid to to be a little extra you know what I mean like sometimes I bring forth a little bit of like not crazy, but like intensity and to just trust like, this is me, man. Like this, I, I can't hold any of that in. I think that is one of the biggest things that's. I have a question. So do you, so inside of that, cause I hear that um, when you bring the extra, the intensity or whatever it, it is, um, is, do you, is there an element of still, of, I don't want to say still, is there an element of respect for him as well? So it's like, like it's doing as you need to do. And, and is there that present? For sure. Yeah. Like, I like, want to make that really clear to everybody watching. <laughs> yeah. Like, actually, like, I, like, I, 
like last night, for example, it's like I felt all this stuff stirring that like, okay, I feel as if I need to make it like take a stand here. And there's certain things that are not okay. And there's also certain things that are not clear. And like, I need to know. And I was, you know, I cried a lot yesterday. Like, just like, oh my God, like cried, cried. And just like, how am I gonna? And, and for me, it's really important before I have that actual conversation. Like I spent a lot of time in the bath reflecting then I spent a lot of time journaling out everything and then I would ask myself like what do I want to communicate and I'd write it all out and I'd be like okay what's the most loving way to communicate this and then I'd write it out and I'd be like okay is this true or what's under this like I, I did a lot of work to get to what really mattered first not just like I'm having all these feelings take them and deal with them it was like oh, okay I'm really happy we got to this because that's that's the key difference mm -hmm. yeah yeah. So by the time what I'm presenting to him, it's like that nugget of what's really, really true. And I've already kind of, I kind of felt a lot of the intense feelings of it. Like I, I cried out the intensity of it. Yeah. So what was left on the other side was still very true, but I was able to kind of be like, this is what I need to know from you. Yeah. This is what I want. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what mm -hmm. I need. And it was very strong, but it was also like, I had gone through the fear and intensity enough that I could say it in a really loving way that made him kind of go, oh, instead of like, holy shit, you're crazy, <laughs> right? Like, you know, but it's, it's, I it's, love that. Yeah. yeah. That is gold, Michelle. That is gold. I really want you all to like rewatch that part. So it was like the processing first on her own. And then she can bring to him just like the core of it. And without, I, I don't love using generalizations, but typically men like conciseness and clarity typically yeah. because it's really hard for them to peel back all the layers for you. Like that's what women love to do is keep peeling. They're not mm -hmm. so much into that. Like I don't, again, huge generalization. Um, but I know that that's the kind of thing that like in communication with a man works. It's like you do that work on your own and you let out a lot of the intensity so that it's not, it's also just a considerate thing to do, to not dump it onto someone else. Like this is always my key message around sharing your emotions without the intensity because, because you've processed enough of it that like when you get to it, sure, some tears might come up, um, but like the message is clear and it's, it's not asking him to unravel it all for you. Like mm -hmm. you're your coach, mm -hmm. right? And there will be times that that will happen, but it can't be the majority of the way of like communicating with your partner. Mm -hmm. Ryan would totally agree with you, 100%. <laughs> right. It's like, he, he says sometimes, he's like, you have more feelings in one day than I've had in my entire life, <laughs> which like was isn't entirely true, but just, you know, the way he yeah. sees me experiencing it. And he's like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's okay, but like, I don't get it. And he's just, it always comes down to like, for him, he loves like, what, what can I want? do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what, so what can I do? You know, like, and so that, that helps him for sure. Yeah. This like, is the clarity. The message, this is such a key message that I think like, we need to keep sharing um, because like that's the piece. And I actually think we might need to do something entirely around that. Mm -hmm. um, because that is the key. You can share what you want. You can share your truth. Just do some processing first on your own and then share it in a way where you're just getting to the core of it and they don't have to peel back all the layers because they don't even necessarily know how mm -hmm. or how to that. Like most people aren't. So it's just too overwhelming and it, and it's it's like, I'm not willing to do it. I need you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come to you with all my stuff and you figure out why I'm really upset versus mm -hmm. like, and, and the questioning of, is this really thing, the thing? Like what's underneath this? Like what's actually the thing that I really am desiring to communicate or feel or whatever and just presenting that and then letting him fill in the blanks of, well, and I'm curious. So when you present him the core thing, do you fill in all the blanks or do you kind of leave it now for him to come back with like, well, this is how I can help that? I think so. One thing I've noticed is like when I'm having one of these things that's like, oh, there's a lot here and I need to take the time to get to the core so I can communicate it. 
I realized the pattern is, is that there's something normally that I'm scared of and like, I'm pretty self-aware. So if it's hard, if it's challenging for me to get to what's under it, it's normally because the fear that's under it, I'm almost afraid to ask, actually ask directly. Cause like, if this, this is the thing that I'm afraid of and I ask it and he doesn't give me the answer I want, like, ah, like it's, yeah. you know, so I notice there's always an element of that. So there's an element of where I have to come to terms with first that he could answer in any way that he might answer. And, and I have to decide that I really want the truth more than I want to feel good mm -hmm. or like possibly feel good. It's so like last night, for example, I had to directly ask him, are you moving to Ottawa to be yeah. with me and have a life with me? And there was all sorts of stuff on top of that, that I was and like, like, and now when I look at the things that I thought I was going to say, they seem so superficial, but they were almost kind of like manipulative without me realizing it. And, and I realized, no, under all of this is like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, are you moving here to be with me? And I just needed the answer to that. And, but before I could ask that, without craziness around it, I had to just be in the place of like, whatever is true for him, I want him to tell me. And I'm just like, I'm open to the truth. So I think I, 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 I'm, I get really, really clear on my end and then just try to be open to see what comes back. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. So strong. That's so powerful. And and it's fair too that he sometimes just so you all know, like like regardless of Ryan, who else we're talking about, like sometimes these big questions, they don't know how to answer them right away. And they sometimes need time and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Right? Like they have their fears, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses, like we are all just humans doing our best with each other, but we need to do our best too. Like not, you know, and doing our part and our, like your part was just getting to the core, getting to mm -hmm. the core. I love this. I'm mm -hmm. so glad that I went here and I'm feeling like this needs to be a whole conversation. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out what is the, the right space to create that conversation. Yeah. It's such a good one. It's, yeah. Oh, it's like, and it's, it's like, it takes so much practice. Like it's, yeah. it's so, even when you do it and you do it, like you, you would think that by this point, it sounds like I'm good at it, but like that was so hard <laughs> to get to that point. It is like not easy to bring yourself there to be yeah. so like confident and like, yeah. you know, it's. What do you do when the same fears or questions come up for you? And now your fear is that you don't want to ask again. Like, how do you address wanting to be reassured when his answer is positive? Wait, okay. What do you do when the same fears or questions come up for you? And now your fear is that you don't want to ask again. Like, how do you address wanting to be reassured when his answer is positive? Mm. I'm not sure I understand the question. I, how, how do you... Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, this is how I relate to it because uh, sometimes, okay, like, like say I have a fear, like, do you love me? Do you want to be with me? Then the answer is like, yes, absolutely. And yeah. then it comes up again. And you're like, right. I want I want more reassurance. Reconfirm. Got it. Yes, I don't yeah. know. It was not absorbing that. Okay, so how would you address that? Um, we can both answer. Yeah, for me, I again, I try to like sort it through a little bit first, like, okay, like, what is like, where's this fear coming from? But those other times where you're just feeling a little like, want oh, reassurance, I just think like, well, you know what, I want to be with someone who can give me some reassurance when I need it. Like, especially if I ask like gently, and like, you're not in a blaming way, mm -hmm. I just kind of give in to wanting it. Like, I just ex accept that, like, sometimes I need reassurance. And I say, like, I would love for you to give it to me. And then generally it's, you know, given like not like I don't, I think for me making peace with the fact that sometimes I'm insecure is really nice and like a really form of like, like self love that I really needed yeah. to give myself. It's like, sometimes I'm going to be insecure and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I 
totally agree with that answer. And and a couple of other things is like, yeah, processing it first to be like, do I really need to ask this again? And like, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, so like just sitting with it for a moment to see how much of that you could clear up on your own. Cause sometimes you can at least peel off some layers mm -hmm. of it. And then like the energy you bring with it is not like, if you don't answer this, like I'll die. It's like, I know I've asked this before and like, you know, sometimes I get afraid and I'm asking again. And it is such a form of self-love to just accept yourself the way you are. And I also, as a little caveat, say this is relative to how emotionally intimate you are with someone too. Like everything in stride. If you haven't had certain conversations and you're asking him to validate, then it's like kind of, it is kind of seeking an outside validation where maybe like some deeper conversations actually just need to be had so that you wouldn't need the reassurance, but we all like reassurance. Like we all like to know. And and your partner to some degree just has to kind of know that this is who they're with. Mm -hmm. You can't allow yourself to evolve eventually into like needing less reassurance, but that this is just part of the many aspects of you. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's like, I think that you and Ryan, because I know you've had enough deep conversations that you could say something like that versus like if you throw it out of like you know out of context where you haven't even um really just been honest about some of the deeper layers then it's like mm -hmm. that's what you need to go to not up here totally covering like what you really need to be saying down here totally so, wait who's asking this let me see if i can go in the group and just respond with your name um one second i I'm just popping into Facebook because we're using StreamYard. Mm -hmm. Well, while you look at it, yeah. Uh, while you look for that, I think like what you just described is kind of exactly what. Oh, Danielle. Okay, beautiful, Danielle. Yeah. Ellen. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. hi, Danielle. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I think that's exactly like what happened last night. Like he's away right now for work unexpectedly, which was like a really big challenge. Yeah. And and um so it's like making things bringing things a lot more to the surface yes and so i was having a lot of that feeling of like just like not feeling like just like looking for reassurance and like looking for like how to connect in a way that like how to feel that feeling i normally feel when he's here and it's been challenging and there was a little bit of that like every day kind of feeling like how do i get this like reassurance i need and it kind of was coming to a head and that's where the reflection and the getting down to like okay like what's under all of this like because i'm asking the same things every day and it's not satisfying it yeah. and that's why it really helped to look like why what is at the heart of this like what yeah. is that little thing and then i realized oh it's that question it's like i don't know what the next that next phase in front of us is is like we we talk about our future and living together but not in a like are you moving here for me like are, is this your plan you know like when you get a new job which is like right you know in front of you are you making this choice? Are we doing this? And I realized that was actually, even though I didn't realize it, that was under all of the daily trying to figure out, you know? Yes, exactly. Like getting to the core question. Mm -hmm. And this this complicates things a little too, Danielle. It's like, and sometimes what might be required and you just have to get honest with yourself is like, oh, a little surrender i'm trying to control i'm trying to know all the things like and that's where we really just have to have really honest conversations with ourselves like is this a moment for me to sit back and surrender and allow things to unfold or is this a moment for me to have more clarity and like like really getting to the truth of certain things because of maybe certain topics are lingering you're like well i like i don't want to leave it in a lingering space right so it's like it's it is a dance it's a dance and then there's not always a black or white answer. Yeah. Can I can I tell you what Danielle's little girl said the other day because it actually helped me in going into my conversation. She was having a conversation with her daughters about like, you know, trying to be a good mom and like wanting to be the best mom and her 5-year-old oh, 6 is re 6 now, her 6-year-old daughter said to her, "Mommy, you don't have to be the best mom, you just have to be you." And <laughs> she told me that and I was like, <gasps> that is like and it's just it's like god sometimes you just don't know which way to go and what to say and what to do and what strategy to use and the only thing you can do is just like okay i'll just i'll just try to be me you know yeah. because it's like 
Is, is this a time to share? That's who they're with. That's who they're married to. That's who whatever, right? Like, that, like we try to hide so much of ourselves and then wonder why there's like some lacking connection. But the answer is right there in front of us. We're like so afraid to show who we are. And I get, I get it. I can reflect on the early days of like being with Jack and like some of the fear of like really showing all of me. Mm -hmm. um, Reese is just so amazing. So I'm guessing that's been already back. I also yeah. love that you fully understood her question. Obviously you would. Um, <laughs> it's Danielle. Um, <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Cause I didn't even know that it was her. And you were so good. Yeah, it's so good. Um, okay, we'll, we'll wrap this up and, and continue another time. I think really at this place, but I just want to say thank you. Um, I love talking to you. And like, I always tell Michelle, like you transport me to like this really like, like beautiful space where I can just be in all of who I am. And I love that about you. Like, I just feel like I, it's even hard to put it to words. Like I go somewhere really magical when we speak and she says, deep down, you knew. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just appreciate you being so candid. Like that's also one of your amazing qualities. Mm. Um, I think, oh, I, I think though that it's like, this just feels like such a safe space, like with you and in this group and it just may, and it feels so good to just like show up and be me and then just be like accepted. It's like the most beautiful thing for me to just be here and be like, you want to hear like what's real yeah. for me? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's all a gift. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. I love you too. Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon, ladies. Feel free to pop in your questions and we'll check them out. Just tag us. Bye. Bye.